Hello, everybody. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. <laughs> happy July. I'm so happy to be with all of you today. I know it takes a minute or so for everybody to start populating and coming in, but I just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm thrilled, as always, to be with you on Wednesday. Um, for those of you who do not know me, I am Marna Thal. I'm the owner of ThinWithin.com. I've been helping people lose weight without dieting for the last 23, four years, a long, long, long time. And I also want to thank you so much. So many of you have been listening to the podcast, coming to the Facebook lives each week. And I just want to give you a big, huge thank you so much for supporting me, for listening. We hit 25,000 listens yesterday. I'm so excited. It's so fun when you want to do something like a podcast. At the beginning of this year, I was like, oh, like in October, I think. I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe we'll try this. I think this would be fun. And I thought, mm, do I have anything I want to say? <laughs> well, sure enough, I do. And thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. It makes me feel so good. And I love making an impact in your lives both on video live and on the podcast. So thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Hi, Karen. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Barbara. Hi, everybody on the phone. Nice to see you, Kay. Monica, lots of New Jersey folks. Texas in the house. Colorado's in the house. We got Virginia. We've got Pennsylvania. We've got all sorts of great. So happy to see all of you. Well, welcome, everyone. So today I want to talk to you all about what you're looking for is not in the fridge, right? Right? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the fact that so often, hi, Miss Diane, glad it worked today. Happy to see you. <clears throat> so what you are craving is not in the fridge, okay? Let's start with the standpoint and come from the standpoint that the only reason you should be turning to food when interviewing and looking at naturally thin people is really from a standpoint of hunger. And many of you on my tribe, in my tribe, you know this. So if you're listening to hunger, then we know that anytime you're reaching for food and grabbing food to just snack, grab, take space in your life, then it and it doesn't have anything to do with hunger, then we know that there's something else going on, that there's something in your life that you need, or you've created a habit of grabbing food and it is not supporting you. It is not what your body is needing from you. And so I want to talk to you today about what you're craving, what you're looking for is more about your life and what you're craving in your life, then it is your fridge. One of the things that I think about a lot is, you know, what, for those of you who are reaching for food and grabbing food when you're not hungry, why is that? And so often, I feel like life gets really freaking boring. And we go through the same humdrum. And one of the things that we're looking for, or you might be looking for in your life, is some fun, is some play, is some joy, is some company. And so you've got to get those things, but it's not food that's going to be your buddy. One of the things I learned and realized years ago that I could keep making food my buddy, I could keep turning to food as my friend and using it late at night, using it when I was tired, using it when I had negative self-talk to numb me out, or I could actually start dealing with the issue at hand and dealing with my life in the way that I actually wanted. And you want to lose weight. All of you are wanting to lose weight. And none of you are going, oh, when I lose weight, I want to unconsciously just go to the fridge all the time. I want to snack my face off. I want to turn to food, right? None of you are dreaming about that. 
You're dreaming about weight loss, not so that just the pounds go down, not just so that you see the number go down. That's great. It's the same with like money. You don't want money for the paper. You want money for what money will give you, what you get from money, what you will have in your life from money, whether that's security, whether that's actual things. Same with the scale. You want to see that number change, not just for the number changing, but what you perceive life will be like as a thinner, lighter you. And so when you're really connected to who you want to be and what that life is and start living from that vantage point, then it's much easier to recognize and notice, okay, I'm reaching for food and this is not what I want. This is what I want in the fridge, in the pantry is not actually what I want out of my life. And I need to give myself what I want in an entirely different way, entirely unique way. So I want to review the stop strategy if this is happening for you so that you have a tool, you have a strategy that you can use as you start to look at what it is that you really want out of your life. What is it that you're really craving and needing and deal with that in that way. So we're gonna look at this in two parts. Let's first look at just taking a simple action step. You're, let's assume you're not hungry, you want food, you know it's not really great for your body. And so let's use the stop strategy. So the S in stop is to Slow down, take some breaths. Okay, slow down, take some breaths. Let's just center and ground you when you want to go have food because we know that what's happening and what's being activated when you're not hungry and you just want food, that is your inner two-year-old self. That's your two-year-old self. And that part of you is wanting something. So let's calm her slower down. So the S in stop is slow down and take some deep breaths, okay? You're going to calm yourself down. Then the next thing, T. T is going to be tune in. Listen to what's going on inside of you. Do not make it wrong. Tune in, okay? So stop and take some breaths. T, tune in. Don't make yourself wrong for actually wanting food and you're not hungry for it. But if you can tune in and look at what am I really craving? Am I actually really tired? And am I actually needing a break? Am I actually wanting to avoid what I have to do? And food would be a lot more fun and be my buddy right now so I don't have to actually go mow the lawn or vacuum or do something like that or make dinner. And you have to look at it like, okay, well, yeah, this isn't pleasant to have to go mow the lawn. And of course, food is going to always look more enticing than going to mow the lawn. But do you want to lose weight? Do you have that vision for yourself and you keep crafting it for you so you can live into it? So S, you're going to stop, take a deep breath. T, you're going to tune in. O, we're going to own it. Own it. Own the fact that you are not hungry and own what's actually going on. The more you get clear of owning what's actually happening for you, instead of going into victim mode, instead of going into excuse land, oh, well, I'm hungry because I didn't eat that much breakfast today. Well, you're not, if you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, then I don't care if you had breakfast 20 hours ago. Start owning it. Like, get real with yourself about what's going on. It's so easy to let that inner two-year-old start taking you out of the game by going, oh, well, yeah, I've been so good today. Let me have some food. No, own it. Own that you want food and you're not hungry. That's what I mean by own it. Own that you want food and you are not hungry. Own it. And then make a plan. I like making a plan from the standpoint of, okay, I know I'm not hungry. What am I actually really wanting? What am I really needing? Yesterday I realized, I said, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so tired. I needed just a 20 minute nap instead of going to turn to food to try to give, to somehow think it would help my energy. 
right? So come up, P plan, come up with a plan. And then look at that plan. Okay, if I go take a nap, how am I going to feel 10 minutes from now, an hour from now, two hours from now, tonight, tomorrow? I'm going to be a heck of a lot happier with myself to go take a nap than eating through it and then feeling oh, all sluggish and miserable. So that's the stop strategy. You've got to start owning this. And so one of the things that I was thinking about for all of you as well I know it's not always comfortable to sit with the feeling of in your head, you're hearing this voice, right? You're hearing the inner two year old who's saying, come on, let's eat, let's go have something, right? But you know, it's not in like, you know, it's not in the fridge, you know what you want, you know what you're craving is not in the fridge. So sitting with yourself, sitting with that dialogue as it plays out if you use the stop method, it will relax it and you'll get to a plan. But you have to also know, okay, so that's the strategy for when you have this voice in your head that wants you to eat, but you're not hungry, you know it's not in the fridge, you know that there's something bigger going on in your life. So then let's look at that. I want you to all kind of, you know, it would be great to take out a piece of paper and I want you to start looking at what is it that you really, really want out of weight loss? It's not just to see the number smaller. Because if like you're the same size right now and the number was smaller, would you be happy with that? If you say yes, then just freaking take a piece of paper and tape that onto that scale. There you go, you get to see it, <laughs> all right? But oftentimes that is not what it's about. It's about the life we want to have. Are you clear about what you are doing here? Are you clear about why you want to sit with that voice that's screaming in your head, you did really good today, you should probably eat a little something, and not give in to her, not give in to it? If you know why you're doing it, it's a lot easier to sit with that voice and know, hey, this is the reason why I'm going to allow for her to have a little bit of a fit right now allow her to be crazy and scream and yell and then I'm going to sit with it and if you know okay but I'm doing this so that I can play with my grandkids so that I can get up easily so like my client Barbara who wanted to fly on planes and not have to use a seatbelt extender and go walk and travel she can do that you have to know why you're doing this so many of you know you want to lose weight. You know it. You're so clear about it. You've said it for years, some of you decades. But why? Why do you want it? It's easy to keep repeating it and your head gets bored hearing it. I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight until it's just another sentence in your head, but it has no meaning to you anymore. And then you wonder, God, why don't I take action on it? I tell myself all the time, I want to lose weight. Yeah, because you have not activated inside of your mind, inside of your head, what you really, really, really want as, a ro as it relates to losing weight. And you haven't changed it up. When you create a vision, just like on a vision board or just like a vision that we create in the inner circle, what we want to create. In the inner circle, we change it up every month because I know it gets boring. It gets boring to read. Could you imagine reading the same white paper, the same book over and over and over and over again? All of a sudden, you would hear the words but they wouldn't mean the same thing. It's like when you watch a movie and you love it and it just means so much to you and you go, oh my God, it's amazing. And then you keep repeating it and watching it over and over and over again. And all of a sudden you're like, eh, yeah, that's a good movie. I like it. But then maybe you don't see it for years and all of a sudden you see it. And you're like, oh, it's so good. That's why when you repeat over and over, you've got to create some new excitement in your brain. Many of you are just turning to food because life is a little bit boring or you're lonely or it's just blah. So how do you start creating a new life? That should be part of your vision. 
What do you want to be doing this month? What do you want to be experiencing? What do you want to be saying to yourself? That's where so much of your energy will come from. That's when you start to ignite intrinsic motivation and inspiration for you when you know what you are moving towards and you keep changing it so that it speaks to your life now. Your life in the summer is different than your life in the winter. School year my, is different for me than summer year in my family. So to have it be the same goal or the same life, it doesn't make sense. A lot of times I tell my private clients, I want you to get a life. And I don't mean it in a rude way. But what I mean is, is I want you to think about spicing things up a little bit. Whether that means spicing things up with food, like ordering something different, having fun with eating something new and exciting, or whether that also means let's spice things up. You say you want to go and um, you want to go bike, you want to go hike, but you tell yourself, I'm going to do that when this is the problem. I'm going to do that when I'm 10 pounds lighter, when I'm 30 pounds lighter, when I'm 100 pounds lighter. The problem with that is your dreams are way outside of you. They're way out here. I want you to bring your dreams in closer. So start going on that hike. Map it out. Make it happen. So what if you go 10 steps and then you come right back and you sit in beautiful nature for a while? Then at least you're moving your life to what you're saying you want it or what you're saying is a load of crap. It's a lot of BS and I don't want you to be sitting in a mindset full of crap and full of BS. If you want to go hiking, let's make it happen now. You want to shop for cute clothes? Don't wait till you're 50 pounds down, 20 pounds down. Shop now. Feel good now. Stop telling yourself that that's when you will have a life. It's just an excuse. It's just keeping you from having the life you want to have now. It's keeping you from living the vibrant life that you want. Do you see how, do you see how all of this, like that most of the time, unless you're hungry, it's about your life not working for you, that you're turning to food to nurture, to numb out, to comfort, to, or maybe it's just a habit. Do you see that? And isn't it time you change it? Isn't it time to get really excited about what you want to manifest, what you want to craft, what you want to create? It gets, it's so exciting because your dreams can be endless. We don't have to stop dreaming just because we're not kids anymore. We can keep dreaming, but starting to dream is, is about also taking action. It's great to say, when I lose weight, when I'm 135 pounds, when I'm 110 pounds, when I'm 180 pounds, whatever your goal is, when I'm X weight, I want to do X, 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 X. Well, let's start it now. Let's not wait for somehow something to occur for you. Life is too precious. We know that. We know that with COVID. We know that with I had a, um, one of my, my aunt who I lost last year um, to cancer, her mom all of a sudden wasn't feeling very well and they found that she had a football sized tumor on her appendix and they rushed her into surgery and sadly she didn't make it. And so her funeral is on Friday and like it happened in two days. Life is precious. If you want a different life, if you want new dreams, let's make it happen and let's not let your body or food stop you. Let's put food in its place and let's get a life for you. Let's give you the life you want. And the only way you do it is getting out of your comfort zone. It's not comfortable to, it's, it's, it's really comfortable to dream. It's really comfortable to say, I want to invest in another house. I want to, I want to go hiking. I want to go skiing. I want to go bike for 
this, you know, for miles. It's, it's easy to say that. But then when you're showing up on your bike and you're out of breath, what's the conversation here? What are you saying? So that's the next piece. So once you start living into what it is you want, you've got to reinforce the thoughts that you want to think as a naturally thin you, as a healthy, vibrant you. So things like, I can do it. I got this. This sucks or this is hard. Okay, yeah, it's not easy. But I'm doing it and I'm so proud of myself for doing it. Reinforcing when you step out of your comfort zone that you actually acknowledge that you step out of your comfort zone. Some of you are so good at this. You step out of your comfort zone, but you know what you do? You're like, oh, that wasn't so hard. But it actually was. It's something you haven't done in years. You're like, that wasn't so hard. It was easy. Yeah, now that you've done it, but to get yourself to step out of the comfort zone is it can be challenging. So keep making these steps, okay? If you are not living the life that you want and you're turning to food, I want you to have a come, come home moment, right? Come home to yourself. What's really going on? What is it that you really want? If you want weight loss, I mean, I can get that for you. But I know you want beyond weight loss. You want what the weight loss will give you. That's where I want you to all be really clear. Those of you in the inner circle, those of you who are starting the 30-day challenge, those of you who come and are new to me and joining me and listening to the podcast or watching the videos, what do you want from your life? And I guarantee it's not overeating late at night. It's not stuffing your hand in a bag of Hershey Kisses late at night. There's something bigger for you. There's something you want more out of. Now, I'm also very clear that I want late at night to lay in my bed and watch TV. I used to feel like, oh, I shouldn't or that's bad. I really should be reading. I really should be working. I really, right? Some of those things. I would have those thoughts. And then I was like, no, I really want this. This is what I truly want. This gives me joy and pleasure. I can have that joy and pleasure. I don't have to eat through it. I do not have to eat through it. I can enjoy this time by myself, with my kids, with my husband, and be okay with it. Some of you feel guilty for like these, these pleasures that you have in life. And so no wonder why you keep pushing yourself or no wonder why you're turning to food because you never actually allow yourself to have what it is that you really want from your life. I want to watch TV. <laughs> I want to watch really good documentaries and really crappy like Bachelor, right? I want all that. I do. That's what I want. That gives me joy. And I'm okay with it now. And I'm no longer fighting it. And so guess what? When I stop fighting it and saying, I, this is what I really enjoy, then I could just appreciate it, enjoy it, and create it in a way that my naturally thin body and self would enjoy the most. So I want you to think about how far your life is from the life you actually want. And what's one thing you can do this week? You say you want something. What could you do to bring your goals closer to you and start acting as though you're that person? It's really, really beautiful to start crafting and get clear of your life that you want and move it closer to you. It doesn't have to be a dream. Even in COVID, even with everything going on, you can be biking, walking, hiking. You can be doing some of these things to make your life, to fill up your life, to fulfill your dreams. Okay? Don't keep pushing it out. <coughs> Don't use, sorry about that. Don't use COVID as an excuse. Please. Don't use anything as an excuse. Don't use money. Don't use anything as an excuse to get your dreams met. And all you have to do is start taking one step towards them and celebrate the heck out of them. One of the things that was so clear to me about my mind was that I was really good at bashing myself. I was really good at telling myself that I didn't look good enough. I wasn't thin enough. I wasn't this enough. Da, 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 and I can still go there to this to date. What is that going to do to my self-esteem? It's going to plummet my self-esteem. It's going to make me want to isolate. It's going to make me want, not want to show up with friends and family and loved ones. And it's going to make me feel like crap. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You've got to build this up. 
it's not giving me the, it's not even that it's not worth it. It's not giving me the life I want to, if I were to keep doing that. Okay. So I want you to be thinking about this. I want you to start using the stop technique. If you aren't using it and you want a strategy, use the stop technique. I want you to think about what is it that you keep going to the fridge for because it's not in the fridge. No, ma'am. It is not in the fridge what you want unless you're hungry. It's not in the fridge. It's not in the pantry. What do you want from your life? What do you want? And are you keeping it way far away? And how can you start bringing it in so that you take action this week on one thing? One thing. That's going to move you towards your dream. It's going to move you towards your goals. And then you're going to celebrate the heck out of it. You're going to acknowledge it recognize it and tell yourself how freaking awesome you are that you actually accomplished a dream and you're moving yourself toward it okay that is where i want you all thinking about today all right let me kind of look through there's a lot there's posts here so if you have questions you have anything you need feel free write in the comment section those of you on the phone hi regina so nice to see you all of you on the phone if you have a question or need anything you hit star two that will raise your hand and I'll know that you have a question or something you would like to ask me okay so let's look at okay some questions sometimes you're just in reaction mode yeah well yeah that's exactly it so much of our eating is in reaction mode it's like boop but look how much you've accomplished when You've already lost, what, 30 pounds? So you've clearly moved through a lot of reaction. Now you just may need to tweak up, just tiny tweaks here and there to make sure that those reactions aren't happening as quickly and as suddenly. So you, so Miss Kate, just keep using the stop technique. You had it somewhere. I know I saw it in the inner circle. Just make sure to remind yourself of it, okay? Um, I don't know how to interpret the uh, compulsive obsession munching mindlessness. So Diane, is it really compulsive? Is it really obsessive? I want you to really look at those words. Or is it here and there? And then if it is obsessive, if it is compulsive, what is it that it is actually, like what's underneath it? If you're, here's what I, here's how I like to think about it. It's a writing exercise for you. If that action could talk, what would it say it needs? What would it say it wants for you to do? Um, another way to say it is if that food could talk to you and say what it's getting from you or what it's needing from you, what would it be? And I want you to spend some time looking at the behavior and looking at what is it going on underneath it? So what it means is the second that you, and this is not going to happen every time you just compulsively or grab something, right? But let's say you catch yourself and you're like, whoop, I really want this. It's going to mean putting that down, sitting with it and looking at what is going on. What's this need? What's happening in my head? What am I actually needing from my life, from my body, from, it's really just from your life. What are you needing from your life right now? What's going on? A lot of times it's about control, feeling out of control, feeling disappointment with ourselves, which is another level of feeling out of control, feeling something. So I'd rather you just sit with that feeling, know that that food's there, but also know it's not giving you the life you want. It's not giving you the body you want. So what's going on? and be as compassionate and loving and kind as you possibly can, okay? Miss Eva, I love this, especially that I should be changing my why. Yes, yes, important Eva. I wanna make sure this July, you look at it and you go, mm, if your vision is a little, like if you're just getting a little bored by it or doesn't feel like it ignites you, yep, change it up, change it up. Great. Sounds like a few of you are really looking at changing up your vision so that it speaks more to July for you. 
Michelle, I do so well for months, then I start going back to old habits. Okay, so Michelle, here's what I would say. What is it that that habit is, is saying it wants and needs from you? What is that habit? You can, you can feel free to share with me, but what is that habit and why is it that it keeps popping up? There's something happening inside of that habit that needs your attention that needs your space, that needs your time, that needs your focus. And then once you understand what's going on, what can you do to gently, lovingly, kindly start to move that habit into the direction of what you really want that aligns with your vision and your dreams for your body? Dreams change at different times in our lives. For a while, it's easy to identify and work toward, but we change. Our dreams change. Our motivation change. Sometimes it just isn't clear no matter how old we become. I get that. And I also get that they don't have to be these giant, humongous dreams. It can be little things like, I just want to be in the energy or the space of having more calm in my life or having more mental relaxation, having nicer thoughts, having a better outlook on my life. Do you see that? Do you see that it doesn't always have to be something monumental as a dream? It can be something very simple. I want to get out in nature more often. And so then you start looking at, okay, how can I do that this week? I want to be treating myself kinder. I want mentally to give myself the love and self-talk that I actually deserve because I don't want to end up the rest of my year telling myself that I look fat, I don't look good, that I should be different. I want to be more compassionate and kind to myself, right? So it's then saying, okay, from that place, it might not be, I want to jump out of a, of a plane. It gets diff- It's different as we age. I totally get that. But it can be it can, in that difference, there can be some real profound goals and dreams and wants and desires that are as profound to a teenager as to you. It just looks different as we age and as things look different. You're welcome for the encouragement. I've been using my affirmations. I'm excited to be walking into my thin and vibrant self. I'm beautiful, confident, lean, and toned like a dancer. I love it. See how that gives us? Nice job, Janie. That really gives you the focus, the direction. The, you can see it. You can feel it. You can, you can experience it. And you're making it happen. Congratulations. You are doing great, great work. Excellent work. So many of you are just... I'm so proud of, it's like what we see, what I see a lot of times in the inner circle and when I'm, when I'm working with all of you is like you see weight loss and then there'll be like another little thing to overcome and then you see weight loss and then there's another little over thing to overcome and then you see more weight loss and then you start doing like what Miss K is doing, going from size 24 to size 10 in shorts this year, since January. That's what's possible for so many of you. How did she do it? She stayed focused. She keeps coming back to honoring her body. She keeps moving her body in a way that she feels inspired to do. She's working through her inner dialogue. That's what it takes to keep seeing amazing weight loss results like this. And so many of you are in this this pattern of doing that. You're taking action, but you're not making it so hard that you stall out and freeze. That's what's so beautiful. So keep that up. I love this. And I keep laughing because you're so confident that you can sit here and give this entire life. And it looks like you're on your birth. I know. I look like I'm naked. I'm not. Can you see this? I have so many of these sundresses. And, you know, this is like the first. I should. Yeah, that's hilarious. Well, you know what? I like to get, listen, all the more confident I could be just giving it all naked. That would be awesome. That would be hilarious. I wouldn't do it. I'd get shut down on Facebook. <laughs> As a teacher, I get the fear of the unknown. I want to feel the fear instead of eating. 
Yeah. So as a teacher, uh huh, get the fear of the unknown. Yeah, for sure. But here's the thing. Here's what I always tell myself about the unknown. There's just no knowns. There's so little knowns that I'm either going to be stalled out and frozen by it, by it, or I'm going to just recognize and own that there's so many unknowns. There's so many unknowns that let's just own it. There's so many unknowns, right? My husband could lose his job. My kids could be in school. I could get, co like I could hang out in that land of unknowns. What is that going to do? Earl Nightingale, I love it best. Earl Nightingale, who I love. If you can get on, get in, get your hands on any old Earl Nightingale stuff. I love him. He said, you know, eight, over 80% of worry just never manifests itself. I think it's probably closer to 90% myself. But I remember thinking, my God, all this worry, all this concern, whether it's trying to find somebody who's a partner, whether it's worry about money, whether it's many of these things never manifest. Now, I'm not saying there isn't worry out there and there aren't reasons to be concerned and be safe and careful. And but I don't want you living in constant worry. Do you see how and why you would turn to food? I mean, if you're constantly all day long giving yourself this whole crap ton of negativity in your mind, all of a sudden you're going to be like worn out and be like, oh my God, holy cow, that was a long day. Just give me some food. But if you're supporting yourself every single day, with saying things that are loving and kind. And, and when you catch those thoughts, Kate, like, I'm so worried, I'm a teacher, will I be out of a job or what's gonna happen? You don't know. There are thoughts we have, they're like cyclical thoughts like that, that are unending and they're open-ended in a negative way. And when you give yourself open-ended questions, which I love in a positive way, but when you give yourself an open-ended question in a negative way, what happens is, is that you will find your brain is just a file cabinet. It's going to find all the reasons why you should be scared shitless. No, let's not do that to yourself. Let's not do that to your body. Let's not do that, guys. You can spend the rest of your life in that negative worry, or you can find all the ways you're going to be just fine. I'll find another job. Things will be just great. I'll figure it out because I always do. I'll be taken care of in whatever way because I'm strong and I'm passionate and I, right? And you can just go on and on about how that's not going to happen for you. Okay? It can be scary to sit in that fear, to be in this situation, to be in COVID life or whatnot. But I don't want you living in it. I don't want you sitting in those thoughts. It's not helping you. And here's the thing, it's not giving you the practice that you need to be able to trust yourself, trust your life, trust your body, trust circumstances. I want you to be more trusting of, of you and of life and more positive. So can you step into that? Lizzie, I've given, I've kind of given up on the bungee jump desire. I'm focused on reshaping my inner dialogue, walking an hour every day, talking reassuringly and supportively to my inner two-year-old who happens to be going through a fear cycle and then forgiving yourself quickly. Oh, it says Seymour. Seymour. Waiting for hunger and stopping. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That is all beautiful. And you know that that has taken practice for you to get there, to go to that place, to be in this really beautiful place. It's like having this beautiful script laid out for your life and then living into it. Beautiful, excellent job. Any other questions, any other concerns? Let me go to you guys over here on the phone. Regina, it's so nice. I can't tell you how nice it is to see that you're on. So, so cool. All right. So here's the thing. You know what to do. You've got the st stop strategy. You know that if you start finding yourself grabbing for food or wanting to grab for food, but you're not hungry, what's going on? 
It's not in the food that you're wanting. It's in your life. And just so those of you know, we start the 30-day challenge on Monday. Monday, I can't believe we start on Monday. So if you've never done it, I highly recommend it. Hundreds of women highly recommend it. Many of you are doing it over again for your second or third time because you love it, which I'm so excited about. So if that speaks to you, if you want to spend 30 days with me where I give you Facebook Lives like this, where I give you trainings and emails on a daily basis for 30 days to set your mind, body, and soul up, then I would love to help you starting Monday. So you want to get registered. The way to do that, you can go to the easiest way. You go to thinwithin.com, my website, thinwithin.com. You're just going to go there. You're going, to click, you're going to scroll down and you'll see something that says register for the 30 days because it's now open. We haven't done our last, our last one was in April. So it's been a while. Some of you, April, May, June. Yeah, some of you have been waiting for three months to do this. So we don't, I don't do them all the time. Um, so join me. I would love to have you, love to have you. All right, you know what to do. Focus on your dreams, your life, and start moving them in. If you're not clear of what your dreams are, are get clear of what do you want to be as you're naturally thin healthy vibrant you what do you want and take one action today or this week to move you toward that goal okay and have a wonderful 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 amazing wednesday and i will talk to all of you soon all right bye everybody